Dear colleagues, it's a pleasure to welcome you today for this uh, new session of uh, ESO online. It will be dedicated entirely to prostate cancer for this first video of 2022. I'm surrounded by top experts in the field and uh, I will uh, present the faculty. Uh, I have asked Carbemir from Valencia in Spain to uh, be there. She's ESO board member. Uh, I have asked Arnaud uh, Albert uh, to come from Rotterdam. Thank you very much and uh, Noel Clark from Manchester. Uh, thank you for uh, being there. So we'll have three parts during this uh, session. Uh, we'll first go to a state-of-the-art lecture about the role of new adjuvant treatment before radical prostatectomy, and we'll start right away with uh, Carmen Mia. Thank you for the introduction. So my role is gonna be to describe the current, the current um, role of new adjuvant and the ADT before radical prostatectomy. I have no complex of interest. And uh, for the patients with high-grade uh, prostate cancer, uh, we are gonna discuss the treatment advances of treatment of ADT that have been used in a metastatic setting that we, we aim to apply in a local therapy. Uh, new adjuvant ADT before radical prostatectomy is not a standard of care. Actually, if we look at the current EAU guidelines or the NCC and guidelines, they discourage the use of ADT uh, before surgery. The definition of uh, high risk has evolved over the decades. Approximately, I would say, 15% of the patients that are diagnosed with localized prostate cancer have what we call high risk. And definitions have evolved over decades, as I previously mentioned. Uh, they started in the 90s focusing on the report of adverse um, pathological events. And then in the 20s, they moved to, to uh, D'Amico and NCC and like guidelines using CT states, PSA, and Gleason score. Finally, lately, we've been using nomograms to predict actually progression-free survival, um, generally lower than 50%. So it's interesting that in the field of radiation, uh, the addition of ADT has provided some uh, interesting results in terms of uh, survival advantage. Has, however, it has not translated in the field of uh, radical prostatectomy. One of the issues and concerns that have been raised is that uh, one of the clinical endpoints that have been used in the trials is sometimes um, misguiding as um, the uh, pathological complete responses and uh, three years uh, pre-chemical uh, recurrence rates have been reported. Uh, so one of the major issues is that um, pathology provides a downstaging to facilitate surgical resection. It controls micrometastasis and as, it facilitates assessment of the pharmacodynamics within the prostate. Historically, the, the new adjuvant trials that have been reported um, had some different issues with the current ones. <coughs> They were used uh, low grade. Uh, they used only one type of ADT. And as I previously mentioned, the definitions of high risk have changed. So a lot of the patients included on in initial trials were actually low risk. Um, the initial trials did not evaluate uh, um, complete responses, and the long term follow up items were not uh, discussed as well. In the contemporary new adjuvant trials, uh, we add a lot of intensification. Uh, in terms of we added more drugs to the treatment and uh, we used actually real high-risk patients and we use uh, also pathological complete responses as endpoint and long-term follow-ups are established. As you can see, this is a table summarizing most of the early trials and one of the major issues, as I previously mentioned, is how they were performed and how the reports on the endpoints uh, were assessed. On the contemporary neoadjuvant trials, uh, more intensity has been applied. As you can see, either AVI, ENSA, or APA has been, have been used in uh, different combinations. Those are all phase two trials. And the duration of the neoadjuvant treatment is mostly six months prior to radical prostatectomy. Primary endpoints have been reported, as you can see, on pathological terms like complete responses or either those or the minimal residual disease that is described as less than five millimeters. What is important to see is that when we add more intensification, yes, we can see 
that there is more complete responses, as you can see on the table below. But also we could see that in these trials at medium follow-up of 3.5 years, that is pretty good for these high-risk patients. Um, no VCR, no biochemical recurrences were observed actually on patients that had pathological complete responses or minimal residual disease uh, after radical prostatectomy. Uh, in terms of looking at even more intense combinations, this trial also was previously mentioned and included over 63 patients that had uh, radical prostatectomy. And one of the important issues that it provides, it provides some insight on uh, some patients that could be actually resistant to treatment. So it could help us uh, define which uh, patients would be good candidates or not good candidates and, and should go straight to radical prostatectomy or which should go to neoadjuvant plus radical prostatectomy. Also, DDR mutations have been evaluated in neoadjuvant trials and they help actually to identify uh, the potential for risk stratification. Actually, the patients that got new adjuvant and had the DDR mutation uh, were having less PT3 disease, less margin, so at the end of the day, less aggressive disease. Also, chemotherapy has been assessed uh, with um, ADT and combination. Initial trials were uh, like in the, in the ADT only era. Uh, where also for chemotherapy and they assess the different uh, regimes, different uh, cycles, different strategies. Uh, they were all phase two trials and they did not succeed in providing any benefit. Those trials took us to PUNCH trial. That is the phase two trial that was uh, provided uh, a couple of years ago. Um, it all included high-risk uh, prostate cancer patients, and the patients were randomized to either receive docetaxel plus ADT, and then radical, or going straight to radical. The primary, primary endpoint in this case was three years biochemical free survival, and overall the study failed to provide any, any um, survival benefit or biochemical um, progression free survival. But it showed that even at, if at three years it's not uh, actually showing any difference. Probably maybe biochemical free survival is not a good endpoint in these cases, but it raises some concerns. Uh, there is an ongoing very interesting trial, the PRODIS trial. This is actually a phase three, and it's a combination of apalutamide and ADT versus traditional ADT only before radical prostatectomy. This is currently recruiting, and uh, we expect some results within the next uh, then of this year, following next year, early next year. Several other ongoing neoadjuvant trials on, uh, prior to radical prostatectomy with several combinations in different drugs, and uh, we expect in the next few years. So the take home message for today is that neoadjuvant ADT prior to radical prostatectomy is actually not a standard of care. Um, pathologic complete responses might represent a surrogate endpoint for a biochemical recurrence and metastasis for survival, but we're still not sure about these outcomes. Intensification of strategies actually seem to provide higher rates of complete responses. And probably improved biomarkers and imaging might help identify the patients that actually benefit from this strategy. Thank you, Carmi, for this very nice uh, overview. I think that uh, Effectively, it is not in the guidelines, but the guidelines are probably uh, likely to change uh, according to the new data and the new trial that are ongoing. There is a window of opportunity with the new agent uh, that are available now. Uh, you told me that you were recruiting uh, in your daily practice for the Proteus trial. Did you see on the field any reluctance from the patient to be included in such trial? Uh, what is, I would say, your, the rate of acceptance when you propose the trial to the patient? For me, the, I mean, it's always about how you explain to the patient. If they are explaining that that might provide a benefit and I, it might facilitate your surgery, then they, I will always on board with you. Um, I haven't had any trouble in the recruiting, but it's, sometimes complicated is, is the inclusion criteria. In my case, I have not been able to add any patient with a Glisten 7 because it requires so many cores that it gets complicated. Mm. All my patients have always been either Glisten 8 uh, or higher. Um, but so sometimes it's logistically yeah. it's a just, just saying that when we design a trial or on surgery, this is the perfect methodology for this trial as a good example of a fast track recruitment, mm -hmm. quite easy uh, on the field because sometimes there are difficult trials and uh, difficult to propose to the patient where you know, randomize the patient for 
a surger, mm -hmm. surgery, a surgical approach. With um, Arnold, uh, we uh, looked also at the design of the uh, trial itself, so maybe an wor one word, because it's not clearly neoadjuvant treatment, it's neoadjuvant treatment, That's surgery, yeah. and other treatment. Maybe one comment from uh, your side? Yes, on that. so I, I agree with you, the fact that it's not solely neoadjuvant treatment, but it's mm -hmm. combined with adjuvant treatment. And also one thing, I'm very curious, obviously, for the results of the Proteus trial that uh, will be there within a few years. But I was wondering, uh, had you thought on a third arm within this trial that is standard of care without neoadjuvant treatment as to really show uh, that neoadjuvant treatment is the way to go? Probably, no. and uh, you have a point there yeah. with, the, with the third arm. Uh, Noel, just one word maybe on, uh, on, this, uh, on this trial. Uh, if you give such a uh, neoadjuvant treatment, uh, what can you expect from the lymphadenectomy, for instance, uh, that you are going to perform in a high risk patient? Uh, because we said that the pathological complete assessment on the prostate specimen is going to be an endpoint. Mm -hmm. But what about the nodes? Can we expect anything from the nodes? Well, I think we have got plenty of evidence in the literature <clears throat> from very good studies uh, which show that in high-grade, high-risk prostate cancer, the microscopic lymph node positivity is very high. Mm -hmm. The impact study is a perfect example of that. So we can expect that we will see uh, with lymphadenectomy there'll be a high positivity rate. And uh, it's likely that there will be a response to ADT. Uh, but one thing I would say <clears throat> in relation to Proteus, particularly in trials like Proteus, which has been a terrific um, uh, initiative, pulling together all those patients will tell us a lot. Mm -hmm. But the natural history of M0 disease is very much longer than the natural history of true M1 disease um, on conventional scanning. So it will be necessary to wait for the outcome uh, before we find out. So although the trial will recruit in 22, 23, it probably won't report on survival or even metastasis-free survival for another 10 years, maybe 12. Mm. Um, and one has to be patient in order to get the information out. Mm. Now, to illustrate that point, when we planned the RADICALS trial of post-operative radiotherapy uh, in high-risk patients, we planned for survival. And we planned that trial in 2005. We started it in 2007. We're reporting on metastasis-free survival in 2022. Okay. Um, so don't expect a quick answer on survival, but you may get a, a more rapid answer on signal. Thank you for this point. Do you think uh, that a biomarker study might help also in uh, identifying which patient actually could act benefit from the, in the primary endpoint that is the complete response, you know? I think oh yes, I think the biomarker story it is, be will be fascinating, yeah. and particularly the genomic aspect and some of the intracellular biochemistry will, I hope, tell us a huge amount mm -hmm. and may be direct because it leaves the clinical community with a practical problem, mm -hmm. which is what do you do until you get the results out at the mm -hmm. end? So, yeah, I think it will be important. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I think it's time for us to go to the conclusion. I hope we, you had the opportunity to learn a lot from this uh, video session. You can uh, keep exploring the Euronco platform of the EAU if you want to learn even more on these uh, topics, prostate cancer, kidney cancer and bladder cancer. Thank you very much.